and thanks for um, joining us today. Uh, my name is Nikki Green, and I'm responsible for coordinating violence prevention programming here at IU Southeast. I also serve as an advisor to It's On Us. Um, so if you are interested in getting more information about the It's On Us student organization here, please email me at anngreen at iu.edu, and um, we can talk, and um, I'll share some more information about that. Um, but today we are super excited to welcome Ms. Ebony Stewart. Um, she is an award-winning poet and storyteller, and she has a powerful voice and a drive to make an impact. She is a woman of many talents as she wears the hat of a community leader, advocate, and facilitator. In addition to being an internationally touring poet and performance artist, Ebony is also a published author and a woman of the world excuse me, yeah, Woman of the World Slam Champion. Her work speaks to the Black experience with emphasis on gender, sexuality, womanhood, and race, with the hopes to be relatable, remove shame, heal minds, encourage dialogue, and inspire folks in marginalized communities. So we are super excited to have you here today, Ebony, and I will turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Nikki. Oh, yo, like this, I already feel really good. I hope y'all are feeling good too. My name is Ebony Stewart, AKA the Gully Princess, AKA I eat your cupcake and it's a pandemic. Anyways, so let me just give you a little bit of how this thing is gonna work, right? So um, in live time via video screen, I'm going to be interacting with you all and doing poems and stuff like that, right? And then you all will respond to me via the chat. So I'm talking to you. So when I'm talking to you, I'm actually talking to you. Don't leave me hanging by myself, this virtuality stuff is weird enough. Thanks. Um, so like, I'm going to ask some questions, right? Uh, let's start with this. Who is your favorite female superhero or like woman superhero power, right? <laughs> Throw it in the chat. I just want to see real quick, right? Um, what's basically going to happen I'll do some poems. I'm gonna throw a link into the chat about how you all can ask me anonymous questions. We'll go on, do some more poems and then we'll have the Q and A, yeah? So here's this thing. Um, my favorite female superhero is Storm. Not Holly Berry Storm, but like Marvel for real badass Storm, right? So me and all my badass walk into a bar, a club, a runway or just any day and I got my grunge turned up. Got an all black everything including my skin but make no mistake I look good in anything cause all my amazing popped into Bantu or bald or mohawk. I'm so punk rock I got dreads for the dreaded. Sister curls on swirl but underneath it all my nature be natural. Star studded spiked and a boss bitch for anybody who wanna try me I'm just saying. I'm so hardcore I get to be a black woman moshing through this pain. Swimming through all this pain even while restrained I reclaim. Hold me down while Long enough and I'll figure out how to turn these chains into a crown. Bust it down to make sure it fit a black woman aesthetic. Magic be my heritage with the unabashed identity. Call me the middle passage guru. DIY queen, yes, honey. No matter if it be fashion, music, art, or this body, there ain't an idea you can have without me. Bush and tribe, the hive, the way we move and keep moving, non-conforming, proper and hood. It's a dichotomy, but you're the only one that's confused. Made a way out of no way. Broke the glass, not a ceiling gum. You want to act like a black woman didn't do it, haven't done it, and won't continue to school you. I made a subject out of myself. So even when they try and stop me, copy, or erase me, I reboot a futuristic somebody and still stay the same. Touched and untouchable, box and bother persistent pierce punk and resisting i got all this power i can't use made all these impressions but somehow my bank account got reduced my culture be endangered because mainstream get to try on my attitude steal my face and make all my black woman trendy without having to give a black woman credit but i showed up like i've been doing Allow me to reintroduce myself to the anti-establishment aka black women been always will be lit y'all know it's black history month right and like basically black women run the world. So I just like wanna like boost black women period. Cause it will be a shame. I would be remiss not to uh, be reminded and love myself. Yes. Oh, more into female heroes who are real life. Okay, Leah, I see you with this little shade. Mm. Yes, I am a fan of uh, Michelle Obama, you know, mother, mother Michelle, for example, for real, for real. Um, use reaction buttons to engage in type snaps. Ah, oh, said, thank you, you got me. Um, okay, so you all are more than you know welcome to react and respond however you want to i have this thing that i call 
echo what you heard. So if something resonates with you, maybe you caught something and it hit different, you could just throw that in the chat, like it's a quote, or maybe it's just something that happened for you, you can have reactions. I know that again, it's virtual living, right? But in the Zoomiverse, you're still able to have real emotions and actually you get to have them in private because you're at your own home. Uh, yes, all right, so, oh, Elastigirl, yes, of course, what? Definitely counts, okay? Also, her body is great. Anyway, um, let's see, oh, I know. What kind of majors do we have in the room? What kind of majors? the room how uh, what majors okay 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 psychology major hi ya business admin hi ya okay okay oh we got business biology psychology nursing business finance okay psychology major we got a lot of psychology people in here what's going on y'all teaching must tell y'all to come to this sociology let's see what else um english professor writing director leah and you know what okay uh digital art english all right okay okay very cool hey how y'all how y'all how y'all we need all of you yes brilliant i saw a nurse somewhere in there i don't know if i mentioned that but um yeah, like, thank you so much for being here. I'll say this. Is there anybody who's undecided? Because I know when I was in undergrad, y'all, I wanted to be everything, seriously. And do you know that just lets you keep going to school? Yeah, that just lets you keep going for however long you want to. Um, but the, the way that my student loans were set up, I had to go ahead and make a decision because the number was getting very large. Um, so I ended up finishing with English and Communication Studies. And I taught ninth grade English for a little while. And then I transitioned into teaching sexual health to sixth and seventh grade. You welcome. <laughs> what type of um, sexual health education did you all get growing up? Let's see that, put that in the chat. What type of sexual health education did you all get growing up? What do we have? I'm not sure. Sometimes, you know, people like our silence is a metaphor for like what really happened. <laughs> But then also some people just take a shorter amount, a longer amount of time to type. Misinformation from peers. Yes, that is very true. Sometimes we don't know and we think we know and we can convince our friends that we know what we're talking about and then they believe us. Um, scary, very clinical. Oh, wow. Okay. Very little information in high school gym class. Yo, Whew. my track coach was my sexual health teacher when I was in high school and all she talked to us about was how fast we need to be running. And I was like, girl, what is going on? Abstinence-based. Okay, so let me tell you, whenever I see the word abstinence, I'm like, oh, that like almost never works. But um, there's also this thing that Texas does. You know, I'm from Houston, H-Town, what's good? But we have like abstinence plus here. And I don't even know what that means. Abstinence plus what? Whatever I want to fill it in with. I don't know. That seems goofy to me, but you know, whatever. Surprisingly, I got a decent one despite growing up in the deep south. Yo, the way people be like low-key kind of like squatting on top of the south is, I'm not sure how I feel about it because I'm southern to the day I die, but my, my teacher focused heavily on correct information and destroying the stigma of sex. Yo, your teacher was dope. That's amazing. I'm so glad that you got that. Very little info from health class in high school. That to be honest with you, like these are more common, right? This is the more common responses that I see. Very minimal because parents at my um, county school were upset sex ed was a thing. I had a, um, I had a parent tell me one time, we had an info session and a parent came, a bunch of parents. One parent said, I don't really see why it's important for my kids to have sex ed because they're not gonna have sex until I'm ready for them to. And I was like, how did that work? Also, that sounds creepy. I like kind of want to turn you into somebody because do what? Are you, are you planning on being there and assisting, sir? What are you talking about? So this is the thing. I'm going to show a video and I'm also going to throw a link into the chat. And it's, it's pretty much to say like, um, it's, I'll say this. If you've never talked to a sixth grade boy about his penis, you have not lived. You don't know anything. They are 
very peculiar individuals, but I do miss teaching sex ed only because the anonymous box questions were so juicy and full and plentiful and added for a very um, welcoming learning experience. So because I don't get to teach sexual health um, in a classroom anymore, usually when we're able to travel, I go across the country and I talk about sex, relationships, body image, dating. And if people you know, don't need me for that, they got that all figured out, they can ask me questions about myself. I'm gonna throw a link in the chat for you to ask me questions anonymously. We'll get to those at the end. Then I'm gonna, well, first I'm gonna show you a video, right? So give me one second and let me switch that over. Anonymous Box Questions, a sixth grade boys group asked their sex education teacher, Miss Ebony, if you don't have a condom, can you use a plastic bag? Mm, mm -mm. <laughs> no. <laughs> plastic bags won't protect you from STDs or prevent pregnancy. Miss Ebony, can a girl get pregnant if I put my pita in her ear? What? No. That was an episode from Family Guy. This is real life. And in this class, we will only use medically correct terms. What's another word for balls? Testicles. Miss Ebony. Why do girls scream when they have sex? And what if the bed breaks? Mm. Men and women make noises as a pleasurable response, and in most cases, this is normal and okay, and if the bed is not sturdy, it could break, but hopefully no one gets hurt. I am trained. <laughs> to answer these questions, but sometimes I wanna say, if there's a girl who will allow you to use a plastic bag inside her, this is not the girl for you. <laughs> Ejaculating into someone, anyone's ear, <laughs> it's gross <laughs> and confusing because why would you want to do that? <laughs> you could say nuts, teabag, sack, beans, boys, friends, but who the hell is Peter? And not all women scream because not all of us need to. The question you should be more concerned with is how will I know if she's faking it or not? Mm. But none of the above have to do with the bed breaking. But then there are questions. Put into the box as true as Tim's name admits it's a star with print as small as a signature of a gnat evenly folded to show me how careful I have to be in answering his questions. Why does liking the color pink make me gay? And if I am, is it bad? And I immediately wanted to show him how to become camouflage how to give up his shadow and become a closet and say they have picket signs and slanderous tongues shaped like swords of malice that we all have a certain prejudice bully inside us. You boy must not believe in being outcasted in blue. Blue is more fitting for the sinking emotions you might feel or the lifespan of your bruises that haven't quite healed yet or the color of your iris before a piece of you turned gray, Tim with all 206 bones, 17 of them reaching for me, and his eyes looks at me the way he does hope and the ability to love outside of himself is waiting for an answer. So I say, you could be a pink Spider-Man if you want to. A bow tie, a cupcake with pink insides as long as your heartbeat preference and colors have to do with emotion, so you should do what feels good. You gotta be willing to be brave enough to be the only one who knows you're afraid. Bad is hiding inside yourself. Bad is someone judging what they don't understand and which direction your heart goes when love is supposed to be a good thing that you shouldn't have to control. Use a cookie cutter to recreate that love can be a person, place, or thing in any emotion. You wrap around that special person that makes your heart explode. When they walk into a room, there is no skull and crossbones over your heart. You are a good thing. Somebody be dying to get next to and there's no shame in that. We all right? We still feeling good? All right. So what are we thinking about that? Any thoughts? Any concerns? <laughs> Sometimes people just be concerned. I'm concerned that whatever it is, right? 
Um, so maybe some of you saw there is a form that is in the chat. You're welcome to um, definitely use that, okay? So, uh, and we can get to that later, but I wanna change gears just a little bit. Let's see, what are some pickup lines that you all have um, used or heard that people have used, right? Like what are some pickup lines that you've heard of that some people try to get somebody's attention in a particular way? What we got? Pickup lines. Some of y'all are like, what? I don't use pickup lines. I don't need pickup lines. People just come to me. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, hey, shoddy. Okay. Yes. I used to get that all the time and I'd be like, I low key don't like that people call me short. <laughs> no, no, friends. It makes me feel a way. So <laughs> let's see. Uh, pickup line I've used. Okay. All right. Let's go. I got two controllers. Want to be player two? Okay. That's for you, that's, look, that's for you gamer heads out there. I like that. Okay, what else we got? What else we got? The Hey Shorty and the, and the controller game. <laughs> that's so funny. I never actually heard of that one. I might need to let my nephew know because I don't play video games, but I may need to let my nephew know and then he can, well, I don't know. My nephew's too cool for school, so he might not. I, mean, I want to take that one. Well, I was flirting with someone one time, just this one time or whatever. <laughs> and I was like giving them everything. I was, you know, like, it was really cute in my opinion. And then they were like, wait, are you flirting with me? And I was like, <clears throat> yes, I um, I am flirting with you. What, what you mean? Like, see, and then I was like, you know what? They don't respect my efforts. That's what it is. And I don't know how many writers in the room, obviously I'm not gonna ask you to read anything, but I'm curious how many writers we have in the room. But you know how it is like when you experience something and then you go home and you write about the thing it is that you experienced, right? And so because I felt like my pickup lines was so good, I ended up turning them into like a poem. And it's called How to Properly Flirt with Somebody You Attracted to and Want to Be Your Boo. <clears throat> So you see them like on the yard or across the Zoomiverse, I don't know. <laughs> and you'd be like, ah, get back over here with my heart. You see, it's like, ah, mm. you smell good. What is that? Forever? Like that's actually my one though. Like that's the, that's that's my go-to. And let's, and let's say don't smell weird. That don't smell good and it's weird. Um, you make me want to eat my words and spit out my spine. I'd abandon all my awful for you. Baby, can I call you baby? No? Okay. Um, you got me blushing in rainbows. You got me wanting to share the other half of my sandwich. If I was a spider, I'd web for you, have a million of your babies and then eat you. <clears throat> okay. If I were a caterpillar, I'd chew through everything just to become a butterfly in your stomach. A chrysalis. I break through all this hard for you. I was an actress once, a lion tamer, a magician. I stopped planning my escape for you. Stop bad mouthing love. Stop believing that love isn't me if I'm more than you. You make me want to figure out how much wood would a woodchuck chuck. <laughs> if a woodchuck could chuck wood when I'm with you, I know the things that hurt don't have to. Us survivor women know how to build walls and make our bodies a fort. Know how to be survivors of war, our expectation, a constant state of revolution. Won't you rise with me? Won't you hip hop and jazz me? Won't you be like totally punk rock and scream, I love you with me when I'm with you? My pulse is a hummingbird. My body a parachute, reminding me that we were not meant to live alone, nor is my heart remote from saving. Can we go through seasons together? So what if November comes, I still won't leave or change. So what if my milkshake brings all the boys to the yard? <laughs> any any Khalees fans out there? It's like, I could teach you, but I have to charge. Um, <laughs> You make my heart an adobe home. Even when they try to earthquake us loose, I'll be mud brick and hold strong you. Uh, in a dream I'm having a hundred years from now, you keep saying you'll be you and allow me to call you mine, yo. I squeeze your pimples and shave your back for you, son, because that's love, okay? And some of y'all like, mm, no, sis, you went too far, that's gross. And it might be why you by yourself right now, because you're selfish. Um, <laughs> you remind me there are easier ways to do things, I just never took them. I forget to be afraid when I'm with you. So I'm saying like, can we be an item or a pair and like share space together and stuff? No? Okay. Um, people
people are always like, why does it end like that? Because I was giving this person everything. They was like, are you flirting with me? Plus anything more for me would have been like harassment. You know what I'm saying? And you want your yeses. You, you don't want the kind of yes. I'm just saying yes so you can get out of my face. You want the, like the real yeses. But okay, so let's see. Um, can I holler at you? I'd be like, no, you can't. Don't holler at me. I don't respond well to yelling. Okay. I used to ask people if they um, want to go to Walmart with me. Okay. All right. That's different. That is different. That's a conversation started right there. I feel like, I don't know. Um, I thought I was on earth, but you make me think I'm in heaven. Well then, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, let's not, let's not stay here. Let's go to heaven child. Um, can I buy you a drink? Now, Nikki, you know, that's a song child. Can I buy you a drink? Um, you don't want me. I'm too high maintenance. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> okay. This is the response. Okay. With this, with this clap back, <laughs> excuse me. I think you dropped something. My number. Oh, y'all are really cute. So it sounds like y'all y'all ready for Valentine's Day. I literally said that if I can't get a massage or a um, foot rub, some port wine, or let's see, chocolate covered strawberries, then ain't no Valentine's Day, big. Ain't no Valentine's Day. It don't exist. Anywho, let's get a little bit more personal, right? What are some fears that you all have or that you've heard that people have? Like, what are some things that you're afraid of? Anybody want to share? I know that's like a really vulnerable question, right? Things that you are afraid of or fearful of or that you've heard that people are afraid of or fearful of. What we got? Some people are like, yo, I'm not scared of nothing. I'm a gangster. I don't get scared. Scared to scared of me. Oh, okay. Go off then. Oh, okay. Honestly, I'm afraid of death. Yo, out the gate. Thank you so much, Rena. Here's the thing. Um, here's what I think about death and what I remember about death is that my grandmother, when she passed away, um, she wanted to die in her own home because she was like, whatever, I've lived here and y'all gonna come and watch me um, uh, transition. And so she's in the bed and we're all gathered around. And, and then like, you know, you, it's something about watching um, a person transition and the whole family dismantled, right? We all just sunk down and we're crying, we're upset. And I'm the quietest person in my family, by the way, which is crazy, right? But I said, hey, y'all, maybe we should just all die together. That way we don't got to hurt like this. And my family thought it was like the most morbid thing I could say. And I was like, I'm trying to help us out. I feel like if we all die together, like we don't got to deal with this no more. But the, the thing that I did learn is that death is so selfish. It brings out the selfish part of us. Like we don't want to lose someone because we don't want them not a part of our lives. But who are we to tell like a higher being that some it's not their time to transition. But I understand like death is is a big deal, right? Um, being the same parents mine were. Woo! This is a this is a poem, child. I'm I'm waiting on that poem to get written. That's that's good. Yeah, like. Fortunately, though, you're aware, it sounds like it's, you're aware of the things that you want to do differently than what your parents did. My mother, you're, you're afraid of your mother. Me too. Me too, friend. My mama is 4'9", and I feel like every, every time I'm around her, I just never know. You know what I mean? Sometimes I'm like, does she know I'm a, I'm a grown up now? Um, I have a lot of dental anxiety. I hate going to the dentist. Josiah, that is super real. Um, I, I share that sentiment with you, like nothing ever goes bad, but I'm just like, I don't know. Um, I saw a, a tweet the other day where somebody was just like, um, going to the dentist should be free because I didn't ask for teeth. I was like, I kind of, I kind of mess with that a little bit. I like that idea. Um, being judged by people that never met me, assuming they know me. Oh my goodness. So true. Yo, that is so true. Thank you for sharing that. Um, you know, oftentimes we pass judgment on people based on something that we're lacking or that we're jealous or envious of. Um, and so another part of like judgment brings about fear, right? And oftentimes I think that fear is illogical. Like it doesn't necessarily always have a reason. Um, it could be something that we created in our heads. It could be something from our own trauma or our background or way, things that we've been told about other people or things, right? Um, but being judged, 
y'all, it's like judging someone is almost as if you're judging yourself. I'm going to do this poem called Fear. And um, I always like to ask people about their fears because it makes me really nervous to do this poem. And so then like, even if you didn't share one of your fears, you're probably thinking about it. And now we in the same vein, we in the same community. Thanks, welcome friends, come on over here, come on over here. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm do this poem fear. And then I'm gonna check to see what questions we have um, from that link and form that you all gave, right? And see if I can answer some of those really quickly, come back and try to do a poem and then go into the q and A. I'm stalling cause like the poem fear makes me anxious. Yeah, let's try it out. <clears throat> I'm asked to write about the birth of my demons, to tell how fear is born, the way it came into existence. I struggle myself to ink, strike through words, crumble a hundred pages with fear, written all over them, leaving me waist deep in torture, flood my body with every story that has ever tried to consume me. Fear must have been born like this. And tremble and strange sounds must be a belly's echo with muffled screams slung all around. Must be an artist, must be an international student relearning everything that couldn't make its way across an ocean. Must be an island, must be lonely growing lusciously. Must have grown fangs and thorns and vines. Must have wrapped itself in everything hard and hurt. Must have strangled love until its eyes popped out. Fear must be blind and touching everything. Must have eight arms and three heads. Must be a monster mating with itself multiple times until it became a forest, a continent, a whole person, a place to live. Fear must have a stubborn heart. Must thump stress, speak creep. Must haunt your dreams, your goals, your happiness. Fear be a bottom feeder. Must scrape every last bit of hope from your feet. Must keep you stuck and graduated hater. Yeah, fear must be a cowboy roping, hanging. Must be a gangster with machine gun. Must be a police officer with an empty weapon at the emptiness weapon inside the soul of a black body. It must be a black mother's home with all these unarmed black bodies walking around. Fear must be a nigga. Everybody want to be a nigga, but don't nobody want to be a nigga. Shots fired. Yeah, shots fired. Yeah, fear. Must be bombing core beauty and exotic. The only person of color in the whole room. Must be the revolution untelevised. Must be a man calling out another man when misogyny forces its way into its mouth. Fear must be coming out, but still having to pretend to be someone else. Must be a body in transition. Must be permission for two women to kiss in public, for two men to hold hands. Fear must be a law, must be in place to save the human race. Quote, the universe wrote fiction in us and it's called fear. And I'm not saying I'm ashamed. I don't even wanna be brave. I just don't wanna be afraid of being who I am, but fear is the part of me I know the most. Therefore, I think I'm free, but am I really? Fear is who we love in sex and in paying our tithes to. Yes, fear is a God, a religion who we pray to and believe in. Fear mustn't be uttered, admitted, or claimed to have faith in. Fear must just be who fear be and how fear came about. All right, everybody okay? We still feeling good? We got through it, yeah? Um, it might be a good time to, I need it. I'm gonna take like a deep breath in. Exhale out. All right. Let's check the, I was about to call it the doodle dad. Does anybody else use words like that when they can't think of what they saying? The doodle dad, I'm about to look at the doodle dad real quick. Um, while I'm doing that, you know, there were some sponsors that helped out for this event. Um, and that is can, uh, Campus Activities Board. Let's see, we got It's On Us chapter. I think Nikki is in here representing. And then uh, Sigma Kappa Sorority, ooh, okay. Hello, friends. Thank you so much. And thank you for all you do. Questions that we have. Is it wrong to be mad at my friends who tell me you're not fat, you're beautiful? I don't feel great about myself and I don't feel beautiful, but I never tell them I'm ugly. Okay, I got I get what you I get what you're saying. I think um, I don't want to tell you that it's wrong to be mad. I don't I don't get to control your feelings and emotions. I want to maybe give you some different ways to think about it that sometimes, especially when it comes to our appearance, um, if someone tells us that they don't like the way they look or they have an issue or problem with something on them, then our natural response to our friends or people that we care about usually is, 
no, you're beautiful, you're great, you're grand, and to just like overload you with things to help you feel better about yourself. Not saying that you're, you know, not fat, if that's what you feel. Also, if you are fat, there's nothing wrong with that. There's like hella beautiful women that are, you know, plus size and are amazing, right? So maybe just shift your thinking into thinking that they are trying to figure out a way to boost you up and make you feel good about yourself, right? You could always give them things that you want to respond to though. Like you could be like, hey, I want you to say this instead of this, whatever that is. Or, hey, that makes me uncomfortable when you um, respond in that way. And these are some ways that might be helpful, right? I also want to encourage you for every one negative thing you say about yourself, you got to come up with three positives. For every one negative thing you say about yourself, you got to come up with three positives. Yourself can hear yourself and this is your home, right? So, you know, talk to me nice. That's me responding as your body. As a Black woman, have you faced any struggles or issues as a spoken word artist and sexual health advocate? I'm sorry, I grinned because I don't think that there is a day in my life as a black woman in America that I have not been challenged, second guessed, used as the scapegoat, um, savior. You know, I gotta be it all. So um, struggles and issues, definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, it's, let's see how I can put this. Um, in the sexual health advocate world, I think that a lot of the pushback that I experience, because sexual health is not just about actually having sex or the plumbing of, you know, doing it or whatever people call it, right? That's where some people's minds go to. It's also about when we're talking about how we're raised or our values and morals or um, how to respect boundaries and friendships and, you know, like what the, the consequences of different things. And I generally find, I don't know if this is because I'm a Black woman, but I, when I'm speaking to my family about different ways that they could um, address their kids or um, teach their kids things of, you know, empowerment and, and boundaries and consent, they're like, oh, well, you're not a parent, so you don't understand. And I'd be like, well, you are a parent and I'm watching you mess it up. Oh, okay. Okay. So, you know, there's, there's that that I do deal with. Um, but just, you know, in the spoken word world or community, I think um, there's this idea that <sighs> there's this idea that I have to protect everyone. And by everyone, it means everyone in the in the poetry community needs my protection of some sorts or that I have taken on that role that I need to protect them. And that's a struggle for me because sometimes people, um, I, I have to treat them accordingly, right? And so they might think, oh, well, she's angry or she's mean. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm just treating you how you're supposed to be treated because of how you acting. Oh, okay. And so people don't really too much like that. I also was just told like three weeks ago that I'm bougie, that the poetry community thinks I'm bougie. Now, let me tell you what that what that's about. For me, they're saying, oh, Ebony is bougie, like she likes, she likes nice things, you know, all of this stuff. But if you look up the definition of bougie, it's to insinuate that I think that I'm better or more than what I am. And that's what got me, right? I'm like, really? So y'all think I'm better than what I am based on what? Of Because what you're not? So those are just some things that I have come across. Um, I stand firm and how to overcome it is that I, I was who I was when I got here and I stay consistent. So whatever it is that people think about me is not really my business. All I got to do is continue to show up and be consistent. So let's see what we got. Uh, oh, we got some more in here. Okay. Poetry can be healing, be a healing experience for many. What advice would you give to someone interested in writing poetry and performing it? Um, first of all, every poem that you write, you don't have to perform. You don't have to perform any of your work or share it with anyone. But um, you can look at a performance as more than just like what we're doing now, what you're watching me do. You could look at it as sharing your work with your friends or people that you trust. Um, or you can show up to a poetry Zoom and read your poem and not care about what people think because you don't know these people. You're like, I might not see them ever again in life, right? But I think maybe trying to write from where you where you are and being honest in your poetry and not trying to like over impress or write or sound like someone else or take someone else's story to make it your own to be, 
you know, bigger than what it is or to get more views or likes is some advice that I would give. I would also say read more than you write. A lot of, a lot of poets um, get caught up in, you know, this whole idea that they have to like write every single day. And sometimes you just need the reload and, and to get information that, so that you can write, you know what I mean? So read, watch documentaries, pay attention to everything, right? Um, let's see, I grew up in a church that taught puberty culture. How can I help people understand they aren't damaged goods? Oh, that's interesting. You know, um, church and religion is a very, um, a touch and go subject, right? And some people might not be open and welcome to that change or to that experience, right? So I would, what I've done is I might find scriptures, right? Um, that have been used against a person and flip it and say, what if it means this, right? Um, or shouldn't you see it like that? Cause God is love. So, I mean, that's just what that has to be, right? So I, I would just keep encouraging them and um, speaking into their into their goodness, right? Um, and their existence, who they were made from and what they have to offer. Let's see, generic question, but what do you say to those who are in college that don't know what career they want? Um, finish with something, Sugarfoot. Finish with something. That's what I tell you. Just be in college, finish with something. I don't, I don't know if they have like a generalist degree out there or something that you're that's closest to what you are interested in. Think of your hobby. Think of um things that you know that you're good at or that people have told you that you're good at and try some courses out, right? I had to do it. That's what I had to do. And then I ended up finishing again, like I said, with English and communication studies. I'm using my degree. However, nothing in my degree <laughs> really helped me um, be able to be a full-time artist if I'm just keeping it a band, right? So you don't have to have it all figured out, sugar. I know they tell you that you should, but it's actually quite impossible and stunts your growth if you think you know everything already. Uh, let's see, what's your favorite moment working as a sexual health advocate? My favorite moment, um, one of my students, Javier, came to school with a uh, with a dildo. And we don't have a show and tell portion in my class. That's why I want y'all to understand. He just came there and he was like, hey, Miss, Miss Ebony, um, my mom says this is a toy, but what kind of toy is it? Y'all, I was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know how to respond to this. Um, I, was, I was a bit in shock. I was shocked um, because not only did I have to be like, hey, well, it's a, you know, a, a sexual toy that people use when they're being intimate um, or if they like want to have a moment with themselves, but also you got to respect people's property. You can't just be taking people's stuff out of the, out of their house, out of their bedroom. And so I literally had to call this kid's mom. God, y'all like, oh my gosh, I had to call his mom and tell her that like, so thankfully she didn't answer the phone. And all I said was, I left her a message. I was like, hey, Javier, about you did those class will be in the front office, come pick it up at the end of the day. That was it. And I hung up. It was too much, but it just so happens to be um, one of my favorite moments. I don't always reach an orgasm when having sex with my partner, which is very normal. A lot of people don't, okay? Um, is it wrong to fake orgasm in my dating relationship? Uh, I, think, I think fake orgasms are doing a disservice to yourself. Because if you ain't there, you ain't there. That ain't your fault, right? So I think maybe you all can explore what will help you reach an orgasm. And y'all could do that together or you can show them how you orgasm on your own and then be like, now do this, right? Um, and you can talk during sex. There's all different things that you can do. You don't have to uh, fake an orgasm because that means that you're just trying to feed their ego and that's not fair to you, okay? So um, I would say I don't recommend faking orgasms because, you know, I'm a real bitch, but also, you know, people do what they want to do. Um, and if that's what makes you and your partner happy, cool. However, I have heard that um, there are some men who are like devastated that they've been with their partner for like three years and their partner finally gets the guts to say like, hey, you've never actually made me orgasm. I was just faking it. And then they got a whole nother world of problems, right? So 
that's all the questions that I have in here. Um, I'm just gonna double check one more again, just to make sure, oh, oh, oh. And just right when I said that, look at it. All right. Oh, is it strange not to have an orgasm without foreplay? No, it's not strange. That's how your body responds to foreplay and that's what your body feels like it needs, right? Or that's how your body gets excited and, and interested and revved up, you know what I mean? So I don't think that it's strange. No, I, I think it would be strange if like your partner had an issue with it or was mad about it or, you know, made you feel bad, right? But um, do I think it's strange that your body is like, hey, I would like to be intimate and close in these ways before we have an action that happens in this way? Nah, not strange at all, friend. So um, I'm an artist, which also means I'm a creator since I create things. A storyteller since I have stories to tell. A visionary, I write about where I've been. These poems act as self-help, I'm a healer. Not always for myself, but one time a kid told me he almost killed himself, but he heard one of my poems and decided to keep living. And from that day forward, I was like, today is a good day to keep someone alive. People ask me how I did it or how they should do it. And I'm not sure if they're asking me about the kid or themselves. What I've come to learn is, can't nobody tell what I'm not doing well but me. I get to travel across the country and do poems for a living like that's my job. And out of 50 states, I performed in 47 of them. I read an article that said only, only uh, 15, 20% of people in the US are doing what they love or whatever sad statistic it was. And I was like, my God, ain't damn nothing in me. I'm doing exactly what I've always wanted to do. So I must be blessed, must be exemplifying all this miracle. I am stressed and winning. I look at it, update my curriculum vitae daily. And I'd be like, damn, I'm surprised I knew how to say that word. And ain't nobody wish nothing bad on me but me. Like everything I ever wanted, I manifested at the end of each manifestation. I asked the universe to make me undeniably enough. And people be mad happy when I show up. One time I performed for 200,000 people and I didn't throw up. It was so cool and exhausting. Did you know? I could touch what feels like a million people's energy and help them feel seen, but go back to my hotel room feeling so fulfilled yet lonely. Yeah, it's amazing. Another time I thought I was going to be with this guy that I had, I thought I was going to marry this guy that I've been with for like six years out of my life, but he said he hated my lifestyle, even though this is my life's work because my work means I'm never home. But every time I came back, he was gone as an emotionally unavailable, mentally abusive. I have extreme PTSD from that unhealthy relationship, but someone asked me to do that one poem about that one time where I made him mine. May you find a lover that helps you love yourself. May you find a lover that doesn't require you to give more to them than you have to give to yourself. Did I mention I paid off my student loans with poetry? Can't nobody tell me I'm not the shit but me. I get so sad sometimes. I think I'm losing my mind and I must be since I enrolled in graduate school this past May. I guess I, re I returned to my oppressor. I am whoever I think I am, but I wish being a good person paid more. I heard, I heard it's the wounds people can't see that hurt the most, but I've seen sunsets that look like somewhere tomorrow. My heart is on fire, so I'm chasing the day. At night, I don't sleep, I grind. I've been in my prime like, nine times i got so much love i give and keep giving i have so much advice that are really opinions and maybe they're just hard facts i haven't hardly learned yet did you know that people ask me how i'm doing by also commenting on my weight and here i am some foolish somebody that didn't hate the way they look today but you right girl must be the depression but i'm the kind of giant that's been through what i've been through and you could still depend on i gave all that i had and you ain't never known a black woman who ain't did that my friends call on me when they're down and out or just in need and what good is a god that can't speak life into somebody check on your strong friends check on your strong friends check on your strong friends don't believe us i promise we're pretending have you ever have you ever tried to tell someone you're not okay and they're like, you're good. And you're like, but I'm not. And they're like, you got this. And you're like, but I don't. And they're like, keep going. And you're like, okay. <laughs> you're right. I could do this with my eyes closed. I get so overwhelmed that one time I was drowning and screaming, but everybody thought I was swimming and smiling. I died in that dream and then I woke up on an airplane flying to a different country to do poetry. And I thought, my God, ain't damn nothing in me. I'm, I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed that my life is crazy. My heart is racing. I'm probably dehydrated, you know, 
Um, traveling does awful things to the body, but the one thing I could tell you about being successful is that you have to love what you're doing. Can't nobody steal my joy, not even myself. I heard or, or someone said, if your path is more difficult, it's because your calling is higher. So I say I be hero and legend. Nobody built like me, I designed myself. But every time I climb, my community get co-signed, definity defined, cheers to the most high. I just pray I leave something good behind. My name is Ebony Stewart. I think we're gonna bring Nikki Green on and see if uh, she would go ahead and facilitate the Q and A.